Well, hello everybody and welcome to this happy holiday, happy hips yin practice. My name is Justin, this is Dylan with me, and I have Cody back here roaming around too. They're the real stars of, of this video. But no, you are the real star of this video. You have chosen to come to your mat for this yin practice. Now, this is an all levels practice where we're going to be doing poses that if you've never done any type of stretching on the floor before in a yoga practice, this is for you. We're really gonna work on opening up the hips. So why don't we get right to it? We're gonna start in a seated pose. So you can sit any uh, position that you like. I like to take a block and place it underneath my sits bones and I sit just like this right on my shins. You can sit on a blanket if you have some pillows with you. Any of this will be good for, uh, for your whole practice. Uh, blankets, pillows, or even yoga bolsters, blocks. And so we'll use some of them in some of the poses, but they're not mandatory. So begin to take some time to ground down into the earth as you maybe close your eyes and get prepared for stillness. So allow your shoulders to drop, allow your tongue to come off of the roof of, roof of your mouth if it's there. Maybe softly close your eyes or soften your brow and just have a nice light gaze directly in front of you. Give yourself these moments. This is your time. Give yourself permission. Your practice. Your body. Your opening. Your releasing. In this time of year where it's busy for a lot of us, we tend to carry a lot of the stress in the hips, a lot of emotion in the hips. So we're going to release all of that out here today. Reach your hands high, no matter which area, which position you're in, which pose you've taken for a seat, and then bring your hands through your heart center. Reach them up one more time, big breath in as you extend your arms up, and then bring your hands through heart. We're gonna do that again. Reach high, because it feels good, and then bring your hands in through your heart center. Pause here just to maybe set an intention for yourself for this next half hour or so poses. Maybe it's to relax. Maybe it's to quiet the noise. Maybe you don't have an intention and that's okay too. Slowly bring your hands to the earth. Come off of anything you're sitting on and come into a seat so you can face the front of your mat. Come on to a seat, and then we're going to come to lie on our backs and take our first pose of a reclined butterfly. Now you have a couple options here. You can even take a blanket if you'd like this to be uh, some cushion on your back body. You can lay down onto the blanket. It will also give you some opening in the chest. If you do not want a blanket there, you are more than welcome to just recline back onto your back. You keep your feet together and your knees go out wide. Sometimes I like to take blocks and I place them underneath uh, my thighs uh, so that the upper to mid thighs can rest on the blocks. Some people take blocks all the way to their knees. And if you have the blanket underneath you, you may feel that support. I like to also take a blanket underneath my the back of my head for a little bit, just a little bit of support. So in yin yoga, we work to open all of the lines of connective tissue in the body. We either stretch them or we compress them. And then once we release the pose, that allows the opening of those lines to happen. So the fresh fluid flows through your body. 
So in each pose, there will be an area that you're going to feel it the most. In this pose, you're going to feel it in your outer hips. You may feel this in your low back. You may also feel this in your inner groin. You can also feel this slightly in your glutes, depending on how you're built, right? Every single person is going to feel things a little differently because every body is different. So through these hip poses that we take here, just be aware of how you will be feeling in each and every one of them, maybe feeling just a little differently. If at any point during any of these poses, you need to come out of the pose, you're more than welcome to lay down on your back in a Shavasana. You can lay on your belly. You can come into a child's pose. You can even sit just like we did at the beginning. It doesn't matter whether where you place your hands. Some students like to take their one hand on their heart, one hand on their belly, and you can feel your belly rising and falling which, with each and every breath. If you're at home and you're practicing, like I am at home, you might be hearing noises that are out of your control, right? You might have kids that you can hear in the distance, maybe uh, other family members, a partner, a spouse. You might be hearing things coming from outside, traffic, garbage trucks, fire engines, police sirens. Those are the things we combat sometimes when we're at home and we're doing a practice. And this practice, luckily, gives us a chance to just observe those noises and be as we work the body. So just notice that level of sensation in your hips, in your groin, in your low back, maybe in your glutes. And we don't want to feel anything that feels injurious, right? We're not forcing anything. So if it feels like you're going too far, it would feel more like stinging or pinching. It would feel like uh, something that would be hurtful, harmful, injurious. We don't want that. We want to feel like it's like a kind of a light tug, a gentle pull, maybe a soft, soft, very soft engagement of the joints. Soft. So this practice is different than power yoga because in power yoga, we're using muscle or in movement. When we do any kind of movement that involves yoga or that involves the muscles in those yoga practices, this is different. We're not using muscle. We're working on the joints and the connective tissue that runs all throughout. So many of us complain of back pain. Well, it all starts in the hips. So these poses are really important to release those hips. We'll be holding these poses anywhere from three to five minutes today. Just notice your breath going in and out, and in, and out. As the longer you hold, the longer the intensity may creep in, especially if you have not done a practice like this in quite some time or if you're tight or you're tense from whatever's going on in your life, that's all normal, it's all okay. That's why we have this practice, to loosen up, to stretch it out. Let's take three more breaths together. Breathe in through the nose. In either the nose or the mouth, let the breath go. Round two, breathe in and breathe out. One more breath in and let it out. Take your hands 
to your legs, your thighs, your knees, whatever feels good, and let your knees come together. Push them together slowly so that the soles of your feet meet the earth. Pause here before going anywhere else. Let all of that fluid start to flow through your outer hips. We were in compression there. We had the knees going out. We were compressing some of that fascial line, so it's now flowing. Remove any props from next to you and windshield wiper your legs from right to left. Just noticing how good that feels to release the fluid. Beautiful. Now hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little hug and rock right to left to uh, get yourself a little more movement. And just take some very light bicycle motions with your legs. Again, pushing more fresh fluid through. Good. Now place your hands and your feet down on the mat to get kind of the grounding. We're going to roll over onto the right or left side and come to a seat. Switching gears, we'll come back to all fours. As we set up for our next pose of melting heart pose. Now melting heart pose is going to release some of the upper to mid back, which is important to release when we're talking about hips too, because our hips are aligned in line with everything, our side bodies, our shoulders, and of course the spine. Even though they're not in the same area as the spine, everything is connected, so it's very important. Here you can even bring a pillow in front of you if you'd like. What's going to happen here is we're going to come from all fours onto our forearms. So lower your forearms down onto the mat. And then you can take your knees out just a little bit wider so that you're able to sit back slightly and allow the, the forehead to meet the earth. The crown of your head faces forward as you allow your heart to melt forward. You might even sit back slightly. Now, if you have a pillow and you want to have some support on your head, put your pillow underneath. You can even put a block there if you like. So this pose is going to work, as I said, into the upper to mid back. You also will feel this in your shoulders, especially if you walk your hands forward a little bit farther. You might feel this in your shoulders a little bit more. So allow those areas of your body to reap the benefits. The shoulders, the upper to mid back. You may even feel some of this in your rib cage. Soften. You may even slide back even more as you allow that heart to melt forward. Notice any thoughts creeping up. Notice how that makes you feel. Very normal to have thoughts creep up. Let them pass by and stay focused on your breathing. Got another minute here or so. Good. Take a nice deep breath in. 
and a breath out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more time, fill up. And let it go. Shift forward if you are sl slid back a bit. Come up to all fours. Realign, recenter, regroup, reground. Take a moment and just shift your hips from right to left. If you feel like you'd like to take some cat cows, lift your chin, drop your belly for a cow pose. And then round your back, pull your chin in for a cat pose. You can take a few more rounds of that or just maybe do some circles or some side to side motion. Again, releasing all of the fluid through. Good. So now we're going to remove any props <clears throat> and coming from table pose, we're going to enter into swan pose, which is the first pose and a little series of poses we're going to do to really get a little deeper into the hips. So swan pose means we slide the right knee behind the right wrist and then we bring the right foot up towards the left wrist as far as it will go before you lengthen through your left leg. And once you lengthen your left leg, then you can kind of maneuver your right foot up if you want some more space there. Your right leg does not have to be parallel to the top of this mat. Mine has an angle. It's going to depend on how your hips are constructed. So notice here, before you even go anywhere else, how far you can lengthen your left leg to get into this front left hip flexor. Those hip flexors get really tight, especially for all, the majority of us who are on our feet all the time, which is pretty much almost everybody, right? So now as we prepare to take a sleeping swan, we notice if we need any more time up here, you can stay up top as long as you like. You can have blocks ready to go or a block ready so that you can maybe place your forehead on it or your forearms. You can come down onto your forearms just like this to start. You could come down and place your head on a block or you can come completely down onto the mat. Noticing how your right hip has now opened up even more even more than when we were on our backs in the recline butterfly position. So notice how this right hip has opened more and notice how you can kind of sink into your mat. Let the weight of your body melt into the mat, yet use the props as support. Don't use the props to put your whole weight onto and absorb your pose. That's for restorative yoga, which is going to be coming up on the next yoga class that's released on this channel there's a restorative practice so if you don't want to do any of this joint releasing and you just want to come into some stillness and lay and let the props kind of carry you that's what that practice is for but for this one we're going to just allow that right hip to be opening we're going to allow the front of the left hip to keep active and we're going to be aware that if we feel like we're going too far, we can back off by coming up a little bit, by moving the right foot maybe closer to your midsection. You're also welcome to put a blanket under your left knee if you need some support under your left knee. Or if you have a cat at the back of your mat like I do, you may be getting a little extra push on your feet, who knows. Sometimes animals can be fun when you're practicing yoga at home because they provide an extra challenge. You can't get in their way, right? We're in their way. So here where I am, the sun is coming in and out and I can feel the sun in my window here. If you don't have any kind of extraneous temperature shifts going on where you feel changes. Notice the air around you. Notice the temperature of your body. Notice how it's affecting your pose. If you feel fidgety, that's normal. If you feel like you want to get out of the pose, that's normal. Let yourself be. Relax your shoulders.
We're here for just about three more rounds of breath. Good. Walk your hands back towards you, taking a moment to sit up or, well, this position, come upright with your hands. And then we are going to sit upright by leaning onto the right hip. And this left leg is going to swing around towards the front of your mat. And we're going to take the left leg and cross it over the right leg. So I'll face you so you could see the left leg is crossed over the right. Now, you may not want your right foot on your, your left foot on your right knee. You may also want to take a block and place it under your left knee or thigh if you feel uneven or unstable. Also, if you have low back strain, you can lift up and sit on a block to elevate your hips. This could help you as well, feeling like the low back might take some strain out. You can also place your left leg in front of your right leg. This is called square pose in yin. Uh, in power yoga, we call this double pigeon or fire log. So we're gonna sit up nice and tall, feeling the right hip still kind of, you know, barking at us, right? It's still giving us the little back talk. But that's good that we're because we're now going to sink into both hips as we pull the chin forward and we recline forward. Now here you might want a block. Maybe to put your head forehead on a block. That's what I like to do. You could even take a pillow or a bolster or a blanket and rest your head or upper body on that as well. And it also doesn't matter how far you fold. So the goal is not for your your chest to hit the floor or your mat. The goal is to feel. So as you come forward, you're going to not only feel this in your right hip, but now the left hip is starting to go wah, right? It's starting to give alarm bells out. However, this is where you get a chance to let your body sink into the goodness of the fascia release, which is so good for you. It provides agility. It provides flexibility. It helps reorganize all of the collagen fiber that's going that's in your connective tissue that's what it's made up of is collagen fiber and when it reorganizes it then allows fresh fluid to flow creating healthy joints and healthy joints lead to healthy life we put a lot of strain on our joints. This is a great way to put some healing medicine into them. If you feel any numbness or tingling, you may want to back out of the pose or make some changes. You can sit upright in this pose or maybe halfway up. You can rest your forearms on a block or a pillow and just release yourself forward. Make any adjustments you need to here. Some students struggle with yin yoga because it is a practice where we have to still be aware and conscious of what our body is talking and telling us, how it's talking and what it's telling us. But we also fight with those thoughts, the to-do lists that come into our mind, right? The things that were said the day before, the things that you said, that another person said, that fight, that good thing that happened, all those things cross our minds. And when they do, this practice reminds us to return to the present. And for those of you who listen to the podcast that I have also on this YouTube channel or through 
your your platforms, your podcast platforms like Spotify or Apple or whatever you listen to, you know that I talk often about consciousness and being in a higher level of consciousness. This practice teaches you that. So when you're out in the world, you don't slip into subconscious, which most of us do a lot. And we just kind of operate in the world based on everything we've encountered in the past. Working on that fight, flight, freeze response, that's where we operate from. Instead of coming into the conscious mind when people are talking to you or when you're talking to others and you're careful of what how you respond, processing information rather than just hurrying up and thinking of the next thing to say when someone's talking. I'm guilty of that myself. So we use this practice to work on us, to pay attention, to be conscious. Good, everybody. Take a deep breath in. And we'll say goodbye. To square pose on this side, walk your hands towards you and sit up tall. Pause. We're going to unravel the legs and we're going to come back into tabletop. So we'll make some counter movements. So unravel your legs. Oh my, right? You're going to feel all of the pressure that it feels like has sunk into those joints. You're going to feel it start to dissipate. So start to move your body into those circles again. This time you may even want to go back child's pose and then maybe forward into a cobra and then shift back child's. You can even come into an upward facing dog and lift the thighs up. So just create any movement that feels good to really wash all of that energy through. It should feel so good for you. Beautiful. Let's return to table and we'll slide the left knee behind the left wrist. Remember that left foot doesn't have to be right there behind the right wrist. Just get it into a nice position so you can lengthen your right leg. Your back toes can go flat or you can curl them if you feel better like that. Get a nice upright position going to open through that right hip flexor some more. Hips are feeling much better. I know mine are. Now, if you've never done this before, or you haven't done this in a while, it may feel like you are straining things. So just be really cautious of not anticipating pain to come through. If we anticipate pain and then it comes, we need to back off of that. So try to keep that out of your mind if you can. We're going to drop down into the sleeping version when you're ready. Take your time. Remember, you can wiggle this left foot around or move it with your right hand as you come into the outer left hip, front of your right hip, front of your right thigh hip flexor, and soften. This practice of yin teaches us to slow down, to take breaks, to take moments. The world expects us to be at our at everyone's beck and call, answering messages, emails, on other people's time clocks, time schedules. But in reality, you are the person who's in control of the time clock, the schedule. And so this practice teaches us to slow down because it will all get done. 
but it doesn't have to be all in once, all at once, when things are not feeling the greatest. When things feel overwhelming, things feel hard, or there's challenges. So let this practice teach you to stop, to feel, to notice before moving forward. Good, everybody. A few more rounds of breath in this on this side in this pose. Excellent. Start to make your way back up. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna lean over onto the left hip and we're gonna swing this right leg around so that remember that right leg is going either on top of your left, in front of your left, or maybe you're placing a block underneath your right knee or right thigh, if that feels okay, or a pillow if you need it. This cross-legged position may feel way different than it did on the other side, so note the difference. The chin comes forward, the chest goes out, and instead of folding with the chin forward, which is a which keeps your spine rounded, we don't want that. We want the spine long and we want to hinge. Keeping the spine long, hinge and walk forward so you can fold forward. Take any props that you need underneath your upper body. And then pause. And then soften. Once you meet the point that you do not want to go farther because it could be injurious. Feel your outer right hip, feel your outer left hip starting to be super, super talkative. <laughs> they use the term barking at you because that's what it feels like sometimes, a rough bark. Or maybe it feels like someone is pushing your hips together. That could feel, it could feel like that compressing them together sometimes. Like they have a vice and they're pushing you. Right? It could feel like that, but the release, as you know by now, feels so good.
Good, everybody. Take a big breath in and a long breath out. Let's walk the hands back towards the legs. We're going to unravel the legs <clears throat> and come down onto our backs. So slowly make your way down onto your back. Release the legs long. And let's do some windshield wipering so that we can get all of that through. This should feel very nice after all of that for your hips. <sighs> yeah, feels great, doesn't it? Now bring your arms out nice and wide, long like wings or like you're in a T shape. Bring your feet together and then drop your knees to the right for a supine twist, a spinal twist. You might want to look over your left shoulder. You might want to look straight up or you can even have your right ear close to your right shoulder if that feels good. Make your way back to the center and then drop your knees to the left. Maybe again, you look over your right shoulder. Maybe you keep your gaze up or to your left side. Doesn't matter. The spine is the, is the kicker here. We're twisting that spine to absorb everything. So it, the whole practice energetically flows through your entire body. It's a beautiful thing. And let's come back to the center. Give ourselves one more hug, one more little bit of love here. Maybe you lift that chin and chest up towards the knees. And then take a moment and set up your final rest, your Shavasana. You may want to put a pillow under your knees for support. You may want to have your blanket there as like a little pillow or a block if it feels good. Let your feet go out, splay out, let your arms go out next to you. This is called corpse pose. In Sanskrit, we know it as Shavasana. It's the pose where we let everything go, where we are no longer aware of body sensations where what we do now is let everything rest and we awake from Shavasana new. The old version of us kind of dies away in this pose and we awake anew. So as we prepare to do that awakening, we soften into the mat. We let the shoulders drop back. We let the pinky toes Splay out to the right and left for Shavasana.
rock your head from side to side. And then start to make movements in your feet, your hands, maybe you roll your wrists, your ankles. And then bring the soles of your feet up to your mat so that you're able to roll to your left or right side body. Awakening from Shavasana, pressing yourself up into a nice, easy seated position. Maybe it's similar to what you took at the beginning, maybe just a little different. Bring your hands into your heart center and draw your chin down to your fingertips so that you can offer everything up from this practice. And then draw your thumb knuckles up to your third eye center. The part of you that's all knowing, that front of your brain, the prefrontal cortex, scientifically, right? But in yoga, this is our third eye center where we know, where we see, where we're conscious, that higher level of consciousness. And with that, we bow together, namaste. Well, I hope that your hips feel happy for these holidays. And I hope that you've gotten a release in your body that allows you to move a little more freely through your day, through the rest of this year, and starting out a wonderful new year ahead. Look out for the restorative class that's going to be coming out on this channel here in the coming weeks. And I really encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more yoga classes, podcasts, and lots of fun with me here at the Strength, Yoga, and Freedom YouTube channel. Thank you all for practicing with me. It's been my honor to guide you. I'll see you all next time.